Hey, Brian. Good morning. Hey, Ram. Hey, so um, um, Helia won't be able to make it today as well. So I think if we, if we have things to discuss, we can probably start. Sorry, sorry about the delay. I, I got stuck in a previous meeting. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, sure, I can run through a couple of things and maybe we can just make it quick. Um... Hey, Boone. Around. Can you guys see my share? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. <clears throat> um okay uh so i um i took based on um paul's recommendation from the last meeting i took the tables from the tll spec and um uh, added them to the new the control path spec so um this is a very different hamming code <laughs> to, compared to the other one and honestly i didn't I'm not really familiar with exactly what the math there is because um, it talks about some um, different ways you use uh, matrices and and I, I haven't read the uh, whatever white paper this is based on. So um, so I copied the tape the, the text pretty much verbatim from from the TLL specs with just small um, uh, small tweaks because they have two different um, sizes they use in that spec. So uh, just just to focus on their quote unquote uh, large code word um, version, um, and so I just I I cross everything out here so that, um, we can delete it a little, um, when we're we're settled on this. Um, anyway, um, I guess we just need to check over this to see if this makes sense. Um, the way that I've I've I phrased things, and uh, I did delete some extra bits here, um, given that we don't we don't go as high as they do because I think that they go up to one hundred twenty seven. Um, data bits. Whoops. Oh, so, so this is from the link layer spec, is it? Yeah, from the link layer spec. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's pretty much a copy. Um, oh, others, I see a small formatting issue I can fix. Um, That's interesting. I don't, I didn't know that they went with a different code for the link layer spec. I thought they were going to do the same ECC spec itself. I don't know. No, no, it's, it's actually, well, again, I, I haven't read the base white paper, but it, it looks very different. Um, the code, the the coding is definitely different um, in terms of the matrix, in terms of this, uh, you know, the parity matrix thing is here, which isn't really a matrix. But anyway, um, but then they, the way they talk about the, was it how, shall, was how, uh, where was the, sorry, uh, here it is, HSA, H-S-I-A-O codes. Um it, it sounds very different. And they, the way they do checking is also very different too, because it has this, um, you do this, you do, you multiply these matrices and then there's these codes along the bottom, depending on what, how many bits you're checking or what, what value you get, I think tells you where the error is in the, uh, in the bit. Um, so you can tell where, how you do, how to do your single error correction based on the value of the, uh, is that the syndrome? Got it. Check determine the syndrome calculated by multiplying the code word by C. Yeah. So anyway, um, anyway, it's it's a very different code, and you you check things differently um, compared to a normal um, just XOR code, I guess. So um, again, I I think I, I kind of want to go back and read the white paper. I just haven't had a chance to yet to make sure that I'm I'm doing this right, but. Um, if you guys want to um, double check as well and make sure that I didn't word something incorrectly. Um, also, um, I don't know if there's any ambiguity in how this math is packed into the bits um, for the ECC or whether, and I haven't checked to make sure that, you know, the number of bits they assume for ECC matches us and, and whether we have extra bits and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, like I said, I need to go check that. Um, but if anybody has any suggestions there on how to work that, then that makes then please let me know. Um, the other code um, was a little more straightforward in that because uh, you know the math was was right there. Um, uh, we were just missing the the parity uh, parity bit you know, matrix in the terminology. Um, 
but the, the the way you packed the bits in was pretty easy. Um, I'm not I'm not sure whether what what exactly the result is of of this thing. So um, let me, I'll have to see what that looks like as well. Got it. So I was just quickly referencing the link layer spec on the side, and uh, this table seems to apply to the main band signal. I'm I I did not yet reached the sideband section to see if the same thing applies to sideband as well. Actually, the spec that I yeah, have... they're 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 this is about main. I mean, the whole link layer thing is about uh, link. It was about um, main band. So I'm copying the main band code. Right. So I, I I'm not sure if we want to use the main band code or do we just want to use um um. um... That was the conversation we had last time, and Paul said because we had there was still a bunch of questions about the other. The other code. Yeah, I, I thought what Paul referenced was Paul was saying, suggesting that there is something different for the 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 FICE in the FICE spec. He said there is something for the sideband slice that they have defined um, error correcting codes. Is what I I no, heard. Maybe there's I'm... nothing. There's nothing in the FICE spec for this at all. It is explicitly uh, devoid of information about anything above uh, at the protocol level from a lot oh, from a lot statements. No, he no, no. Paul was talking about the main band ECC. Uh, I think I, I cat it then. Uh... Yeah, because usually the, I think main band. I mean, at least in BAO one dot o, um, the main band ECC was basically a fake. Uh, it was there was no ECC before, but. Uh, um, okay, so because I, I'm not, I mean, I don't know if we need a more powerful code necessarily because uh, the sideband interface is very slow. Um, but I, I don't think it's it, it's I, I don't think either of these are more powerful. They both do the exact same thing. They're both single error correction, double error detection. Really, it's just about which math you want to apply. I see. Okay. So and and they and and as far, again, I need to go double check, but I think they kick the same number of bits. This, the same thing they're just they, they, so the 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 conversation last time was okay we have this right and then but because we did we took out the parity bits from the interleaving right it right. doesn't look the code doesn't look as pretty <laughs> and it's not as easily yes. determined the uh the pattern so i would have to go in there and and do all of the individual xors right and then Paul was like, "Why are we even doing this? We should just use the 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 one from the translation link layer. So the, oh, sorry from the from the link layer spec." And so I'm like, "I didn't even know there was one." And he goes, "Yeah, his and his assumption was always that we would just use whatever algorithm was in the link layer spec." And I'm like, "Okay, well, that's what I'll do." So I that that that's the action I took here. Um, if we want to go back to that one, the other one, that's fine. I mean, this wasn't, it wasn't a lot of work. I'm just really just copying and pasting um, and just some reformatting in Excel and stuff. So if we want to go back to the other one, I don't care, but we need to make a decision about that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm totally on, on the same page with you on that. We need to decide a, a path and, and then put it in the spec and, and call it done. So um okay um maybe if you can can you assign this to paul and see if you can review it offline and and say if this is what he needs because i did, i heard him differently last time i thought there was something um uh, for the sideband slice as well i'm trying to look up the, unfortunately i don't have access to the g drive that they use um, um for updating their spec um, I have requested for access. I'll probably have to send an email to Ila that did to give me access to that drive. I don't think they plan on doing anything with ECC and EOW. If that's what you're asking, even on the on the file, um, the file slice, sideband slice. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they're leaving that up to the protocols. I see. Okay. I mean, even even with with the discussion I had with him on, especially on sideband, their philosophy is like completely hands off. Like they barely even define what some of the pins do, right? So that's why frame has no definition. Frame is just another data line because right. they want the protocol to be able to do with frame whatever they want to do with the frame. Got so it. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do ECC. Okay. 
and then um, and then start, just to understand this table right so um, when when you are when you are calculating your um, parity um, so okay I'll, I'll i'll probably go offline and read the white paper because this is a new code so i'm not sure how they are calculating parity and whatnot yeah yeah again i, I don't know um I'll, I'll need to read the white paper as well um the like I said, I mean, if you look at if, uh, just reading reading the text here, it, it does tell it does talk about um, um, running the individual. There's two matrices. There's one in the zero to seven bits here, first eight bits there, and then there's and then there's the rest of them. And if, uh, for and depending on which one you're doing, um, you know, again, you compare it to the bottom row for determining where errors are. That's about as all I got. That's about all I got from the, the text here. Um, the exact algorithm on how to apply the parity, whether it's XOR or whatever, um, um, I think we have to look at the, the white paper. Okay. And then um, do, you, do you think it would be good to um, put a link for that white paper? So anybody who wants to do further reading can directly go reference the white paper. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't found the white paper yet. I haven't looked. <laughs> okay. I, I, okay. I, I, I can when we do when, when we find one. Um, there isn't one, I don't think, in the link later spec. Well, actually, yeah, let me double check actually. Maybe it's in the reference. I guess I A O. Oops, that is not right. No, it's there's I don't see a link uh, or a, or a mention of the white paper. In fact, there's probably needs to be more <laughs> of that in here. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, I, I assume it's someone we can Google. I just haven't done it yet. Um, okay, well let's. Um, so one other, I guess, related issue here. Um, I was I was checking bits here against you know um, I was looking at terminology um, because of the you know look, reformatting the ECC stuff and then trying to figure out some some other things around parity and I noticed that we this table here um, we explicitly call the thing one of these these columns message size um, and I want to make sure that this column here. Is still the same thing as uh, length or len. Is, is that the same thing? Uh, I believe so. Yes, that is okay. correct. Maybe so, we should we it. just rename this to length because that just to make sure that people understand? Yeah, I think I think that would that would be apt. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do that. Uh, I think the rest of it makes sense. Um, all right. Um, all right, we can do that and go ahead and do that. I'll leave that for there. Uh, I'll leave that for now. Okay, uh, next thing. Okay, so on all of these um, uh, commands, I went ahead and added all the fields just to make sure that um, everybody is clear and, and, and can, we can get an agreement into what... Um, into what uh, is the assumption on all the fields, like which ones are don't care, et cetera, et cetera. Um, probably need Paul for that discussion so we can table it, but let me let me know, go through a couple of the comments I have. Um, so we don't, I don't think, I didn't see anywhere where we talk about what happens to data bits outside of, uh, outside of the link. We're gonna assume they don't care based on previous discussions with Paul, but we should, we should make a declarative, declarative statement there. Um, um, and then I think, yeah, for address on read response based at, at Paul's recommendation, we added, I, I made sure addresses that don't care. I think everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, I think we have some terminology things. I will, we'll, we'll need to go through and scrub at some point. Um, we talk the way we talk about addresses and addresses space is not really unified. So I try, I tried to change things where I saw there was some ambiguity and talk about how it's the the partners 
sideband address space and things like that. When I talk about addresses, because you're, you know, you're only issuing really addresses in, in their address space. Um, but, um, some of the other things I think were less clear. So just something to keep in mind when we're going through things, we need to, we'll need to get to a point where we, we, uh, have uniform definitions of these address spaces and how we talk about some of these things. Um, yes. So, so Brian, can you go back to the previous table that, that you just changed the, the message uh, size to length? So uh, in in the in the table above, right? Um, it says uh, so. So it gives you the address and it just encodes the last three. Okay, so so you have trans. So where is the transfer size? There is no transfer size. So is that something that is so transfer size? My assumption was that it was just based on length, right? So at least in this table, it's just a decode. So transfer so length up here, right? You know, you have a a value. And then it means oh, a see. certain okay. size. So, okay, size yeah. is. This is more. I think. I think this column is just more informative than it is um, part of the variable. Right. This is the one thing you're changing. Right. Maybe would it make sense to say inferred from length or something like that, um, so that uh, people don't go look for the size in the table above. Uh yeah. Let me think about. Uh, how would we say that? Um, or maybe just implied or something like that. Maybe you can just bytes and then in bracket or implied transfer size. Uh, how about we just call it, I just, we just call it length. <laughs> um, uh, you're saying like implied transfer size? Yeah, because, because I mean, we, we are not, we are not actually um, putting that anywhere. It is encoded in the, in the length. Yeah. Itself, right so yeah no i i agree i completely agree i i was confused the first time i read this it took me a couple of seconds to realize what that was what it was talking about um <clears throat> that's fine i think apply transfer size is good okay um, i mean the other other only other terminology i would think is just call it length and then you see le and a length but i guess this is this is just as good um valid byte from address yeah yeah we talk and we talk about the three yes yeah the rest of the rest of the <laughs> okay yeah sorry it jumps when I clicked. Um, okay. Okay. Anything else over here? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can't think. Of, I, I don't know if there's anything else um, in this one. Uh, let's see. We talk about the. Yeah, again, same with the address spaces. Address should be in the partner's sideband address space. Again, I just, we just need to make sure we're, we're, we're clear on that. We do have a, there is one small terminology problem also, or I'm not sure it's small, but <laughs> we talk about the partner's address space. Um, and then we talk about local address, we talk about local, but I don't, I don't know if we ever talk about local address space. I think, and we, Yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. Okay, yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll show it to you in a minute because I, I remember trying to remember where I, where I ran into that. Um, yeah. Okay. So, all right, we had this whole discussion about this table right here last time, and so right. based on the discussion, I wrote this this general flow. <laughs> um, I don't know if we should make this a diagram or whatever, but I, this, this uh, seems straightforward at the moment. Um, but I call it the transmitter, which. I'm not sure if that because you know I needed I needed some 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 other name that's not the partner right because you're talking about the the person doing the action and not not where you're doing it on. Um, is so number one I guess is transmitter the right terminology for that? Um, maybe we can call it as an initiating software because it's all software driven, right? It is basically. The... Well, do we want to preclude hardware implementations because this is all pretty simple? You could do a state machine here. I see what you're saying. Okay, so you're basically saying, so so maybe you can just call it as an initiator, right? That initiator could be a hardware initiator or a software running on that side. Okay. Uh... Because transmitter, I I would like to keep that. Um, uh, so 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 when you say transmitter, you also have 
the a transmitter um, hardware logic um, in that. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I, I realized that the flow actually uses the receive channel as well. So, right. uh, so maybe we can call it as the initiator and the receiver maybe, or the initiator and the target. Well, the partner would be the other one, right? Or partner, yeah, initiator and the partner. That's also fine. Okay, all right. Let me, I'll, 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 I'll do that. Okay, so uh, anyway, so let me just run through this real quick. So the um, the transmitter reads the con the first thing to do is transmitter can reads the config and make sure that the go boot is is low and that there's no error flags currently set. Uh, the transmitter then writes the uh, if you're doing a write command you write the write data register. If you're um, uh, then you write to the configuration register itself in order to set the go bit and the um, write slash read bit and the address the correct values for the command. Yeah, address and length. You also need oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Length field as well, right? So address and length. Um, wait, do we call it Lin as well? No, oh, there's no link. To it. Is that a is that a yeah, uh, we'll probably need to add one? I think that got added very recently uh, because Paul wanted bytewise access. Yep. Yeah. So uh we'll have to add that in that see. table. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, basically, it writes the config register with all the appropriate values. Um, then the transmitter pulls the config register. Uh, I'm not sure we, we want to, I guess we don't want to preclude implementations with interrupts. So maybe I should say monitors instead of pulls. Yeah, monitors is also fun. I mean, Optionally, I mean, implementations can, I mean, you can put an implementation note that, um, uh, I mean, you can also set up an interrupt if you want to, instead of doing a pool or a monitor. I think monitors probably covers both poles and interrupts. Yeah, and interrupts, yeah, that, that, that's fine. Okay, the transmitter monitors configuration register waiting for the go bit to, to go to zero, uh, value of one until the return. Uh, you should say one to the return command is received for the or read and non-posted write commands. Transmitter should make sure that checked error bits uh, when pulling as well. Wait, I should say again. Yeah. Um, and then if the transmitter executed a read command, it should read the the value from read data before executing the next command. Anything we anything you see we're missing here? In terms of a normal, so the, the only case for the error, right? Uh, the only problem is um, sometimes you can set up your error to read on clear, and uh, you also set up the error to generate it interrupt, right? So in doing so may cause a problem because if the transmitter is also constantly reading the error register, whereas you also set up an ISR, uh, there could be a race condition where you encounter an error, you trigger an ISR. Um, but at the same time, the transmitter is also con constantly pulling it. So I'm not sure if there is a race condition where the transmitter could, the read from the transmitter could um, clear the error um, and the ISR when it comes and reads it won't see any error. I'm not sure. I well, mean, I mean, there's there's all sorts of race conditions packing error into this bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, we I, have a problem here where we, we read the config register, right? And then, and then, and then you write it. I mean, there's a chance because one of the errors is based on received packets. You could get a received packets packet from the other side in that that time that you're reading the between the read and the write. So there there's all sorts of problems here with this. Um, I assume that we just kept it like this in order to keep it simple. Right. right. So so I think I think last time the base based on how we discussed, right? So you, you the hardware module that actually does the transmission on the physical line, um, that is state machine based. So and and then that state machine uh, would go idle once it is done sending the command and and then so that it allows uh, the receiver to be able to also come and send any any response back using the same transmitter module. 
but then the go bit is basically reserved for software use uh, because the soft that that's basically intended when software wants to do a read or a write. So when software wants to do a write, um, and if it is a, a non posted write, uh, then that go bit needs to stay high until um, 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 response for that non posted write comes back. But then yeah. once you set the go bit. Um, and you pass this to the hardware module that is doing the actual transmission of that packet. The hardware module will stay busy only until the time it is transmitting the, the packet. Once it is done transmitting the packet, it will go back to idle. So, so I mean, I just wanted to highlight that um, um, a, a go bit set would only indicate that there is an ongoing transaction at the software level. Uh, but then the hardware could have already been done with that trans transfer and then it is waiting for the partner to respond. But that wait for the partner to respond happens at the software level, not at the hardware level. Um, does, I don't know if that makes sense, but... Um... Who sets... So my impression was the go bit got set low when you got a, ret re when you got a return. Is Correct. So when you got a response back, the go bit will be set low so that software can um, either know that right. the data available or it could know that it can send the next command um, uh, when it can send the next command. Right. Okay. Okay. But, but, then, but, but, then but the who sets that low? Hardware, is that hardware? The underlying hardware, the transmitter block uh, that actually is sending the packets, um, that block will not remain busy until the response is received. That block will go to idle as soon as it is done transmitting um, on the serial lines. Okay. Um, and what that allows is if the soft, if we receive a, um, a read request from the partner, so we we want to we wanted to avoid the case where both send a read response re request. Okay. And both are waiting for the response from the part, uh, from the partner. And now you gen generate a deadlock condition because both cannot send the response back because both of both of both sides are waiting for a response. So we want to avoid that case. So the way we avoid that case is at the software level, at the, the go bit will still be set. And this is where Paul requested that we have one more bit or one more indication. Um, if the if sending the response is also triggered by software, then there would be an implementation note that that software would need an additional bit here to make that happen. Um, and, and then the implementation that I had doesn't have that problem because um, in, in my case, the, the response was hardware triggered. It is, the, the software doesn't even come into picture when, when sending the response. Yeah, yeah. But I think we agreed that we don't need anything. Paul doesn't need anything here. He just he have he has another register for that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then that so, so so the like or, or you know or he just uses a reserve bit or or whatever the case is. But but I guess my my question here is what do we what do we need to change about this to capture that or to capture anything you're talking about there? Because I mean I think I think the the wording I have still. Yeah, still matches. So I think, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, the wording what you have still matches, but um, um, I think, I mean, we'll probably have to put an implementation note um, to say, um, or, or I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we we have to say that the response, this the, the transmission of a response, um, if it is. Hardware driven, then we don't. Uh, yeah, let me think about this. I don't know how we should word it because for somebody who is designing this new, um, I'm pretty sure that they are going to have the same question um, that how do we resolve deadlocks? So, yeah, can you assign a comment on that? So I'll probably yeah. think about it and uh, let's see. Um... I'm I'm pretty sure that somebody who comes and read this for the first time, um, would they will they are going to have this question in mind as to hey this is an obvious deadlock how do we resolve it? Well, I assume that they would. <clears throat> I, I think the natural impl implementation um, from reading this would be a 
part of our state machine that deals with that weight state rather than a right. software. Right. And so I think that's, I mean, it, 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 on, on, you know, a void of any other kind of, in, of, of, of input, that's probably where the, it would go. Right. Uh, add an invitation for worst weight states. Is that good enough? Yep. Okay. Um, Yeah, other than that, I think this looks okay. This looks good to me. Yeah, this comment here feels like it's in the wrong place. But let me, I'll think about that too. I think we'd probably need more, more description up here for the go bit, or maybe a separate, a separate statement down here about the go bit. Um, just, just to clear, you know, clarifying it. You know, let me sure yeah, I, I think, I think what that comment description basically says is your go bit is overloaded to say that the read data is valid only when the go bit transitions from a one to a zero. So that's what. Yeah, yeah, but why is it in the read data register? It, it is, it is more of a note. Um, uh, yeah. To say when can when is it ready to read data read the read data register? So so in your case, right? In your case, you have from step four to step five. Um, yeah. So so what you say is if the transmitted executed a read command, the return value should be read from the read data before executing the next command, right? But yes. it doesn't say when the read data is available. So. I think you'll probably need to um, have an, another note, or you could move that note to point number five to see, to say if the transmitter executed a read command, um, then it needs to wait for the go bit to reset before reading the read data register. Oh yeah, I mean, I cover that here. I mean, it's just, you know, again, you stay in a loop on four, you know, four is a while, <laughs> while, while, while wait, waiting for the go bit. And then once it's, once it's low, then you read the read data. Um, maybe, maybe okay, this should just, maybe then, this then should just say only that. valid while reading. Yeah, we can just delete well. delete that from that because we already have included the gentle in the gentle flow, right? So we can maybe we can just yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just my only comment here is that maybe we need another paragraph on GoBit just to, just to double it. From, but anyway, let's say, or how about we just say only. Something like that. Yeah, maybe you can say only valid while go bit is low and the previous command executed was a read. Um, okay. Uh, we have one quick question here. So um, read data is read write. Are we expected to clear this register too? Or do we need to clear? I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, so why is it not read only? I guess is the question. Right. So the reason why it was not read only was because um, at least in my implementation, I was using some of those bits to um, um, indicate a certain opcode. Um, and and based on that opcode, my hardware certain hardware state machines would get tr triggered um, automatically once the partner writes to this register. Um, but from yeah, and then the other reason why it is uh, read write is because in 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 the implementation that I have, um, every everything is um, um, in the same CSR node. Um, um, they're shared in the same CSR node as the link layer. So you have the, the software accesses it through, like, let's say for example, an APB bus, um, the accesses coming in from the partner would also go through on the same APB bus. So, and it would, it would the, the rights from the software, sorry, the rights from the partner would be viewed as if a CPU is writing to that register. So I needed to have it as a read write register and not a read only register, if that makes sense. Uh, no, but I, I mean, I, I guess the question is, is from a spec perspective, does it matter? I mean, um, it sounds like you're kind of overloading the register with some stuff. 
or you have your own stuff. But I mean, from our 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 point of view, doesn't it make it more sense to just call it read only in that case, since we're not doing anything else with the write side? Oh uh, yes, you, you. I mean, read write or read only. I think maybe an implementation choice. Um, if if you want to keep it read only, that is fine. But then if you keep it read only, then um, yeah, I think I think it is fine. I'm okay with read only. I think it probably make makes it more clear. Um, that that software on one side cannot read or cannot write to that register. Yeah, we'll see. here. I'm gonna I'll make a note. Okay. Um, I was I was just thinking about the error bits up there. I mean, this is probably too late to suggest this, but I was wondering if it made more sense to make the make those read only as well. <laughs> um, I mean, again, it would and have them cleared some other way. Um, I don't know. Again, that's probably too late um, given the number of implementations are out. That's fine. Um, yeah, let's, let's move on. Um, how much time do we have? Uh, I'm trying to think, what do we have left? Okay. We have a bunch of stuff that's that, okay. I didn't, uh, oh, okay. Okay. This was, this was the other thing I, I changed. Um, so we have this error register as well in the address space and we have we had some semi conflicting definitions on how to how to use the the register. It's um I guess a register specifically for link errors. Um, I guess one question is is we also do error reporting with the PMR. Do we need this this error? Go oh, wait. This is for local errors because okay you wouldn't do PMR. All right. So number one, it's this is for local errors. But number two, the um, the text above it, which I don't know the provenance of, talks about the only only can only be read by the partner, um, which I didn't quite understand what that why why you would have we would have something called local error codes that's only read by the partner. Do you remember the context of that? I did code register can only be read by the partner and has a noise only look at error cockers and then can you can you scroll up and then can I see that? So this is talking about the registers on the in the um this is yeah, this is talking about the other registers outside of the um the normal sideband and the uh the PMR. The links there's the link state, there's the there's a um and this error register. Uh, I need to recall. I'll also try to see uh, because, because because I mean yeah I I don't I mean some there was a general um, um, confusion or general requirement not confusion I would say requirement by some of them uh, to um, limit what CSRs can be accessed by what side. Um, yeah, we we, we we did we talked about that later, right? right? Right. And so we talked about making things local and stuff like that. But this one right here, again, I think this was called local before we made any of those changes, and so that's why again I'm, I I got I'm a little confused. So my my impression here, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that if you have a link error on the partner side, it would signal to its partner that uh, through the PMR using the using the error code in the PMR register. So you'd get a you get a write into your PMR saying your partner had an error doing during some link stage. If your controller has an error during a link stage, it would signal using it would signal using this local register. Is is that you think that's the intention? 
Yeah, I'm trying to recall because because whatever is in that local error code register, at least it is sent via PMR to the partner. So the partner already has it at his end via the PMR. Now the question is, what do we do for the software running on on the current side where the error happened? And I think the software on the current side would also automatically have that because most of these CSRs will be populated by software or by hardware on that side itself. So yeah, I'm trying to recall why did we add this? Yeah, well, and my other question, I guess in the comments is if you get a PMR error in, does that command set this register? Also, I guess, but again, that would be a hardware interaction, but and all this stuff is actually at a typically at a higher software layer. So I didn't, I, I didn't. Yeah, stop. I don't think, I don't think um, um, if we receive any PMR, I don't think uh, we have anything in the spec that says hardware will automatically go and set another register as well. Um, that would be something that the software on that other side would need to take up if it wants to do it that way. Um, but I don't know. I don't see a use case for doing doing it that way. Okay, so I guess we'll just need to figure out if what this actually is used for and whether we even need to keep it. Um, because I, I, I did, it does add another bit of uh, confusion in the multiple layers of it. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Okay, so again, you're already tagged here. Um, give it a think. Uh, here, I'll, I'll tag you again, just just so we're clear. So we, just so we know we, we know we talked about it at this meeting. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's as far as I got. Oh yeah, this is the same thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and I have a bunch of uh, to dos down here still. I still need to add, I need to figure out which bits the act bit. Um, oh, oh, here's another question. So last time we talked about repair, we talked about okay, there's going to be a defined algorithm that's agreed upon. You setting which bad lanes is enough information to execute that algorithm to know which which fallback lanes get used for that replacement, and then I and then afterwards I I, I don't I can't actually not afterwards but I, I can't remember what the discussion was in terms of what the algorithm is. Is that just implementation defined again a a pre known uh, assumption? that is implementation specific or do we want to define a repair algorithm here? Uh, I think that repair hardware would probably go in the five spec. We'll probably have to see if the five spec already has. Some. I agree, but they, I don't think they have one. They just talked about repair lines. They don't say what algorithm is used by the, by the. Yeah, because I mean, um, that algorithm is not a software algorithm, right? It needs to be baked into hardware. So, and then that hardware is the five hardware. So they'll probably have to define how they um, chain up. I, I thought they had something before, but I don't know if they removed it or they moved it somewhere. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't see anything for repair anywhere in that document. Um, there is oh, Yeah, they, they have something in chapter 13. If, can you can you open the, the file spec? Uh yeah, I am I'm actually I'm reading it one second. That is that sharing? Yeah, that one. Yes. So if you look at the uh, the bullet point number four, so that is probably it's talking about uh, <clears throat> Peck and Ock. 
So those are the repair lanes, right? So, so that is the one that are used as repair lanes. If I lay a single layer, all data lines. Below the defective line, if you downshifted by one. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I think the conversation with Paul was that there was some other corner case here. Oh, I oh, know. No, we talked about the two lanes. Okay. Um, all right. You know what? I'll, I'll, uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. That's Boy Scouts. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me add a note here saying, um, I don't know if the repair algorithm is uh, documented in the five spec. Um, And then we'll discuss whether this is sufficient. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because in my opinion, I think you, each side cannot have a different algorithm. Both sides need to have the same algorithm. Oh, absolutely. Otherwise, this won't work. So, so by extension, I don't think we need to specify what that algorithm is because I mean, whatever that algorithm is, um, both sides already know about it. Yeah. So all we need to indicate is what what five was bad, and then both sides know what to do about it. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had for um, this meeting. You guys have anything else you want to make sure we hit? Uh, nothing special from my side. Boon, what about you? Okay, um, well, I'll make some of these changes. I think we're gonna hit a double check some of the things. I think we're getting, okay. Well, there's a bunch of work to be done on PMR, um, but uh, I think uh, just need a meeting or two to handle that. I think we're getting close to, you know, a preliminary review copy to give to people. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, we'll just need, need a couple of little things and some couple, a little, little cleanup and I think we'll be good. Awesome, thank you. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.